Hi, my dear students. Our discussion for today is all about conversation analysis. And I am hoping that all is well with you today. So at the end of the lecture, you should be able to first examine and discuss the features of conversational interaction. Second, analyze the primary findings in conversation analysis, also known as CA. And third, produce an insight paper on your personal perspective on CA, its features and primary findings. And the instructions for your insight paper will be posted on Wednesday. Now, let us first define conversation. So generally speaking, conversation refers to two or more individuals talking with one another just for the sake of talking. And I am hoping that you are very much aware of this general definition of conversation. Conversation occurs when people cooperate with each other in order to introduce and sustain a single focus of attention by taking turns with each other. Again, there needs to be the act of taking turns so that the conversation process will be more effective. So with these definitions of conversation, we could note that conversation is actually a form of sociability and reflects an individual's ability and willingness to interact with each other. Again, willingness to interact with each other. And so there, in, in, that is in that part that the act of taking turns take place. CA or conversational analysis can be generally viewed as the study of talk. So technically, CA is the study of recorded, naturally occurring conversations or talk in interaction. Now, let us try to digest this technical definition of CA. First, it needs to be recorded. You cannot analyze a conversation if you did not record the conversation. Why? Because it is significant that all the aspects involved in conversing with another people are recorded. Although CA is defined as the study of talk, remember that as you converse, there are also other body languages which are involved. And this needs to be recorded at the same time because CA or conversation analysis is actually one of the approaches which you can use in your future research endeavor. Why am I saying this? When you are in your fourth year in this institution, you will be required to conduct a thesis. And one of the approaches which you can use in analyzing this course is through the conversation analysis. And later on, I will present to you the so-called tenets of this approach. CA is a work of Harvey Sachs, and Harvey Sachs is a sociologist from the University of California. Definitely, he is the one who propagated the conversation analysis approach. And he designed CA as a means of understanding the levels of social order that are divulged in everyday conversations. According to him, conversations are structurally organized phenomenon which have some kind of order. Again, it Conversations are structurally organized phenomenon. And this structurally organized phenomenon is actually mani manifested by the so-called conversational interaction. Conversational interaction is an activity in which, for the most part of it, two or more people take turns at speaking. If you will try to go back to our definition of CA, CA is actually also about talk-in interactions which are recorded. And so, conversational interaction also signifies that there needs to be the involvement of two or more people who are taking turns at speaking. The general features of conversational interaction are the following. First, 
Typically, one or only one person speaks at a time. Second, usually, silence is avoided. And then third, if two people talk at the same time, one of them stops. Now, let us try to internalize this general features of conversational interaction so that you will understand more why conversations need to be structurally organized, okay? So the first one, only one person speaks at a time. This is a very important concept in the communication process so that both sides or both the speaker and the receiver of the message will clearly understand the message. Second, silence is avoided because as much as possible, you should be talking spontaneously about a particular topic so that the communication process will be effective. And if two people talk at the same time, of course, one of them stops. And this is part of or a, a way of expressing respect to the speaker. And these three general features of conversational interaction are highly aligned with our previous lessons on the cooperative principle and the politeness principle. The focus of conversational analysis is talk rather than language. It was also defined earlier that conversation analysis is generally viewed as the study of talk. So, because it focuses on talk or on the recorded taking turn interaction of both speakers, there needs to be principal findings or the so-called tenets of conversation analysis. It is important that these principal findings are clearly explained to all of you so that if in case you will be using conversation analysis as an approach in your thesis in fourth year, you will be able now to point out the different aspects of the conversation that you need to analyze. And the principal findings are categorized into five. We have turn-taking, we have the so-called transition relevance relevance place, adjacency pairs, repair, and the turn design. First, let us try to define turn taking. So a turn in the commons or um, commonly is defined as when a person takes the turn to talk right after the other person stops. Okay? And then turn-taking is a term for the manner in which conversation normally takes place, one after the other. So the turn, therefore, is the opportunity for the speaker to finally give feedback or respond to the message given to him or her. Turn-taking involves many kinds of behavior like the eye contact between speakers, facial expressions, gestures, among others. And these behaviors are initiated with precise timing and are reacted with great accuracy by the speaker of the message. And this one has something to do with cooperative principle. Second principal finding is the transition relevance place or the so-called TRP, which refers to the completion of a turn construction unit. Now, what is this turn construction unit? Please take a look at this scheme in communication. First, the speaker or the current speaker selects the next speaker. Second, the next speaker self-selects. And then third, the current speaker may continue. So how, how is this relevant to the transition relevance, please? From the word itself, transition. There needs to be a transition from one speaker to another or from the speaker to the receiver of the message. And the transition takes place in the exchange of conversation. 
here, the current speaker self-selects the next speaker. So here, it is the first speaker who decides who will be the receiver of a message and what will be the message. In the second one, the next speaker self-selects. Here, the speaker or the targeted speaker of the first speaker may respond to the message, may answer the message, or may simply disregard the message by not giving any feedback at all. And also, the response of the second speaker may depend on his or her own self-selection. And then last one, the current speaker may continue. Definitely, if the first or if the second speaker responded to the message of the first speaker, it is a sign of the continuity of the conversation. So here's an example demonstrating the mentioned scheme so that the transition relevance place will be more clear with you. I named here the two speakers as R and M. So R said that, so Phoebe told me you can play piano. R self-selects. What was self-selected by R? He or she self-selected the receiver of the message and he or she also self-selected what will be the topic or the primary message in the conversation. Second, M responded, yeah. So here, R selects M, which means that this is a manifestation that of all the people who are perhaps present in the venue or in the place of conversation, R selected M as the receiver. So R responded, you know, I used to play keyboard in college. Here, R self-selects. Since R is the primary sender of the message, he or she selected to still continue with the conversation and he or she is the one who selected what should be the response to the message of M. Next, M responded, do you have one here? This is a manifestation that R selects M because once again, the message of R is intended for M. R responded, none. So here, this is a manifestation that M selects R because the message of M is intended for R. So lastly, M responded, okay, here, M self-selects. He or she self-selected what will be the response for R. And at the same time, he or she self-selected that it seems to be it will be the end of the conversation. Therefore, if a speaker is selected by the current speaker, then that speaker must take the turn in the next TRP or transition relevance place. It is the point where the next speaker needs to respond to the message given to him or her if that speaker would want to respond. If no other speaker self-selects to take the role, the current speaker may then continue to talk again. The next primary or principal finding in CA is the so-called adjacency pairs. An adjacency pair is a sequence of two related utterances by two different speakers in which the second utterance is a response to the first. They help in opening and closing the conversation and in negotiating deals and changing topics. So what does it mean? that adjacency pairs are actually a particular type of turn-taking structure and these are being used to coordinate turns. Now here are prototypical examples of adjacency pairs so that you will be more enlightened of the nature and the significance of using the adjacency pairs in the analysis of conversations. First, we have the greeting-greeting pair. 
Speaker A said hi, and so Speaker B responded hello. So both responses from these two speakers are greetings. Second, offer acceptance. Speaker A said, would you care for more tea? And Speaker B responded, yes, please. Third, apology minimization. Speaker A said, I'm sorry. And then Speaker B said, oh, don't worry, that's okay. These pairs of responses are known as adjacency pairs. Now, let's take a look at the repair as one of the principal findings in CA. Repair is the process by which a speaker recognizes a speech error and repeats what has been said with some sort of correction. It is also known as a speech repair, conversational repair, self-repair, linguistic repair, reparation, false start, accommodation, and restart. This repair is a very important concept, not just in conversation analysis, but in teaching the English language or the second language as well. If you will be entering the teaching profession, I am hoping that the repair as a method of teaching and correction in the use of language will be applied by you. So, a linguistic repair may be marked by a hesitation and an editing term, such as I mean, and is sometimes regarded as a type of disfluency. Now, there are four types of repair. The first one is the self-initiated repair. Repair is both initiated and carried out by the speaker of the Chobol source. So here, it is the speaker who said something which is incorrect or perhaps confusing that he or the same speaker corrects that message or confusing message. And then second is the other initiated self-repair. Here, repair is carried out by the speaker of the trouble source, but initiated by the recipient. So it is the recipient of the message who initiates the repair or who gives the correction. Next is self-initiated other repair. Here, the speaker of a trouble source may try and get the recipient to repair the trouble. For instance, if a name is proving troublesome to remember. And the last one, other initiated other repair. Here, the recipient of a trouble source turns both initiates and carries out the repair. So this is the closest to what is conventionally called as correction. And then, let us take a look at the last finding in CA, which is called as the turn design. This refers to how speakers format their turns to implement some action in some position for some recipients. It is about the relationship between the form and function of an utterance and the action it is designed to achieve. So to make an offer, for example, speakers can design their terms in a form of either conditional, declarative, or interrogative. Now let us take a look at this example so that the nature of turn design will be more clear with you. First, with the conditional form. If your friend say would love to have a beach wedding, our company can provide you a discount in the wedding package. For the declarative, we will take the offer. And then for the interrogative, do you think it's really more practical to have a beach wedding? So here, it is apparent that the speaker design their turns in the conversation. Because once again, turn design refers on how the speakers format their turns to implement some action. 
And each of these design turns systematically occurs in particular sequential positions. And this turn design, once designed perfectly and effectively, could actually contribute to the effectiveness of the entire communication process. And of course, before I provide with you the synthesis, I would like also to reiterate that turn design has something to do with cooperative principle. So for the synthesis, my dear students, the CA approach or the conversation analysis approach studies how oral language is used during a natural interaction. That's why it is known as the study of talk. So it tries to explain how people act as they do in a conversation. The whole conversation is viewed as a single event. So once again, if you will be interested to conduct a research in your, for your thesis writing class, when you are in your senior year here at CNSC, it is very important that you know of the different principal findings in CA so that you will know the different areas for analysis in a recorded conversation. So for the references, here are the references which I used for this lecture. Thank you everyone and keep safe.